United States of America has many fine harbors. Our gateways leading to the countries of Europe to the east, South America to the south, and Asia to the west. Los Angeles Harbor is the great port of our southwest, and 3,000 longshoremen are employed to load and unload the ships. Al Huber is one of the longshoremen who load the ships. With his family, he came to this country from Switzerland when he was a boy of 17. His dog, Connie, is a real show dog. Al has taught her to do many tricks. Go get it, girl. <coughs> Connie is large and strong and needs a good workout every day to keep her in good condition. <coughs> Here we go. Go get it. <coughs> that girl. Bring it back. Here we are. Come on, bring it back. Look at Connie run. Al admires the grace of the beautiful animal. Down, Connie, down. Good girl. In his spare time, Al likes to work in his garden. In fact, he raises very fine flowers. John, his neighbor, is also a longshoreman. Al is well liked by his fellow workers, and they often stop in for a visit. They make good pay and enjoy their outdoor work. John, look at these white dahlias. Pretty nice, aren't they, for an old boy like me to grow? You know, someday I'll retire and be a fancy gardener. You'll see a sign, Al's Bloomin' Blooms. Not bad, John, eh? Say, isn't this pink flower a beauty? Really proud of this one. And so the Sundays go quickly by. Monday morning, Al's wife, Erna, is up early to get Al started for the day. She cleans Dickie's cage in the yard. Al must leave at 6.30 for the Union Dispatch Hall to see where he will work. Sometimes the Union Dispatchers notify him by telephone the night before. Erna gets Al's lunch and gives him a letter to mail to their son, who is a radio officer in the Navy, stationed now in the South Seas. Take good care of yourself, Al. Al checks in at the Longshoremen's Dispatch Hall, which is run jointly by the Union and the employers, the shipping companies. The shipping companies notify the officials at the dispatch hall of the number of men they will require to load their ships. At 7 o'clock, the hall is crowded. The loudspeaker calls out the assignments for the different groups of men called gangs. Al works in Gang 30. Today, Gang 30 will work on a Norwegian freighter that brought general merchandise from Belgium. She will return with a load of 75,000 cases of fruit for Antwerp, Belgium, and Switzerland. The longshoremen board the ship, and the dock soon hums with activity. Eighty longshoremen will work today loading this one ship. Fifty-six on the ship, and twenty-four on the dock. Each gang of thirteen men has a boss. Jitneys haul the heavy carts from the warehouse and line them up in loading position. Al is a hatch tender. He directs the men on the dock, and when the load is securely fastened, he signals to the men on the ship who run the machinery to lift the load. The winches are run by electricity. Right now, they are loading in all five hatches. The longshoremen are skilled in placing the cargo. It is an art to judge the space and to fit the cargo to the space, as they say, to make a nice stow out of it. The weight must be distributed right to ride the rough seas. They say it takes four years to make a longshoreman, and some men can never learn. The men who run the winch levers are called winch drivers. Each load is counted twice. First on the dock by a man from the company called a checker, 
and again on board by a ship's official. Thus, an exact record is kept of the fruit shipped. The fruit must be carefully handled as it is perishable. The men, too, must be careful. This is a hazardous profession, and the men must always be on the alert. Parts of the load may fall off, or the wire ropes break, or the men may be hit by the heavy hooks. The men work as a team, and each man must do his work quickly and accurately. The shipping companies carry group insurance for the men. 500 workmen may work loading one ship. Large ships have many decks. Either the chief mate or the second mate directs the placement of the cargo. They know what is coming aboard and how it should be stowed so that it can be conveniently unloaded at the destination. Mr. Martin, talking with the sailors, is ship foreman or boss. He supervises all the five gangs working this ship. Mr. Martin must know how to handle men, as he is the go-between for the longshoremen, the men on the ship, and the men who work for the steamship company. These warehouses are 1,500 feet long, and three ships can dock here at one time. In port, a ship always flies its company flag. Here are the American Fruit Express Line flag, the flag of the port of entry, and the flag of her own country. On the top deck are the navigator stateroom, radio rooms, and so forth. The captain's quarters are always near the bridge. At the stern of the ship, on the poop deck, the sailors hang out their wash and air their bedding to keep it from getting musty. Noon hour. The longshoremen do what they like for relaxation after their hard work. Some go uptown for lunch. Others bring box luncheons. It's fun to feed the birds. The men often play games or read or sit in their cars and listen to their favorite radio programs. Notice Al's powerful hands. He holds the hook that the longshoremen use to pull the cargo into place. He shows this hook to the company guard, who guards the gangplank. Al has worked 18 years as a longshoreman, eight years here, and 10 years in the port of San Francisco. Loading continues all afternoon. Sometimes when the ship is in a hurry, the loading goes on all during the night. One shift of men will work 10 hours in the daytime, and another shift will work 10 hours at night. In port, Captain Jorgensen often goes ashore and leaves the first or second mate in charge. The longshoremen get time and a half for overtime. Their pay compares well with the pay in the other skilled trades. Then, when few ships are in port, they may not work at all. And now the front hatch is ready to be closed. The powerful winches work the ropes and lift the heavy hatch cover. The men shove it into position. In ship language, fold it down tight. The hatch must be well secured to keep the cargo dry and stay in place when the ship rolls. Al unfastens the hook. And now the huge booms are hoisted into sailing position. The men pull the ropes or dies. Al is on the job when there's work to be done and still joking. The ships blow a whistle half an hour before sailing time. At this time, they turn over the main engines and test all navigation equipment. Al jokes with Mr. Martin. Now, the longshoremen have finished their work for the day. At 
after 18 years on the ships, Al still feels the thrill of the sea. Frank, what do you say we take a turn aboard a freighter and see what that Orient looks like? Bon voyage, Captain Jorgensen and Mr. Nelson, and may the children of Belgium and Switzerland enjoy our fruit and think kindly of the country that sent it.